Brilliant.org is one of the best ways to interactively learn computer science, math, and physics. There's thousands of lessons from computational biology to neural networks, algorithms, and even programming with new lessons being added monthly. The computer science courses, particularly the demonstrations on fundamentals and on programming, have been personally quite useful in helping me nail down those concepts in an interactive and concise way. The lessons on Brilliant are an excellent tool overall for lifelong learning in a fun and interactive fashion while also balancing the demands of a busy schedule. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash faculty of con or click on the link in the video's description. The first 200 people that sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Greetings students and welcome back to real analysis slash number theory. It's actually a good video for both topics, so I'll put it in two different playlists. Anyway, in this lecture, we're going to discuss the natural numbers and talk about mathematical induction, which I'll just call math induction for short. For any high school nerds watching this, I want you to pay special attention to the mathematical induction part because it's a super important technique for proving theorems you come across in math contests like the International Math Olympiads. It's also an important and very powerful technique for proving theorems in general, so really everyone should be paying attention. By the way, no disrespect to high school nerds, I was one myself. I continue to be scarred by memories of getting stuffed into cramped lockers. Okay, that, that's not really true. I was very popular in high school, guys. Anyway, let's talk about natural numbers, which are denoted by the stylized N. The natural numbers are basically numbers you can count on your fingers. One, two, three, four, and so on. Zero isn't included, which makes sense intuitively. It's hard to imagine a zero finger. You can't really count zero on your fingers, so it's not a natural number. However, one, two, three, four, and so on, they're all natural numbers. I will note that some people do include zero as a natural number. I personally don't, and neither do the books I read. If I've got a set of numbers zero, one, two, three, etc., I choose instead to call that the set of whole numbers, or W. Now you can see that each natural number n has a successor, n plus one. So to get from one natural number to the one right after it, you just add one. And you keep adding one, and you keep getting more natural numbers. Now this addition of the one to get a successor is something called the successor operation, and I'm going to denote this by s of n. Now this rule about n plus one being a successor is actually the second of five rules of natural numbers. These rules are called the piano axioms. There's actually nine of these axioms, but four of them have to do with basic properties of the equality sign and aren't explicitly related to natural numbers, so we'll ignore those. The first axiom states that 1 is a natural number. It belongs to n. This should be obvious. The second axiom states that if n is a natural number, then its successor, n plus 1, is also a natural number, which is what we just talked about. You get from one natural number to the next by adding 1 each time. The third axiom states that 1 is not a successor to any natural number. It is the quote-unquote first natural number. The fourth axiom states that if two natural numbers n and m have the same successor, then n and m must both be equal. This should make sense if I explain it on the side. The successor of n is n plus 1, and the successor of m is m plus 1. Therefore, if n and m have the same successor, n plus 1 equals m plus 1. If we subtract 1 from both sides, n must equal n. Of course, the caveat to this explanation is that the rules and manipulations of equations usually come after introducing the piano axioms, but our goal here isn't to rigorously develop all of arithmetic from scratch, it's just to explain the natural numbers. The fifth axiom is probably the most important. It says that if I have a set S, and this set contains 1, and in addition, if this set also contains n plus 1 whenever it contains n, then the set S is the set of natural numbers. Let me explain this. Suppose I have a set that contains 1, and contains n plus 1 whenever it contains n. Since we know it contains 1, that means by the second statement it must contain 1 plus 1, which is 2. Again, by the second statement, since it contains 2, it must contain 2 plus 1, which is 3. And since it contains 3, it must also contain 3 plus 1, and so on. I can keep going, and eventually I will construct the entire set of natural numbers using a set S specified just by these two statements. S is therefore the same as the set of natural numbers. 
This axiom is very important. It's the basis of mathematical induction and is often called the axiom of induction. And speaking of mathematical induction, let's talk about that. It's a very powerful technique used to prove theorems, and the structure of this technique is similar to what the fifth piano axiom looks like. In fact, the principle of mathematical induction is based on this fifth axiom. It says that if the statement p1 is true, and the statement p sub n plus 1 is true whenever p sub n is true, then all the statements p1, p2, p3, etc. are true. So when proving anything by mathematical induction, there are three simple steps. The first step is to show that the base case, the statement p1 is true. The second step is to assume that pn is true. And the third step is to show that p sub n plus 1 is true, given the assumption that pn is true. If you show the third step, you're done. According to the principle of math induction, you've proved that all the statements p1, p2, p3, etc., all these statements are true. Let's demonstrate a quick example of mathematical induction by proving the theorem that the sum of the squares of the first n natural numbers is given by 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 for all n that belongs to the set of natural numbers. The first step is to prove the base case when n equals 1. That should be easy. Our left hand side, the sum of 1 squared, is just 1. And if we substitute n equals 1 into our formula on the right hand side, we get 1 over 6 times 1 times 1 plus 1 times 2 plus 1. So both the sum of 1 squared and the formula for n equals 1 are equal because you effectively have 6 divided by 6, which is just equal to 1. And therefore, you have proven that the base case is true. The second step is to assume that the formula is true for a natural number n. And the third step is to prove that the n plus 1 case is therefore true. That is, we have to show that this formula is true when we consider the sum of the squares of natural numbers until n plus 1, and use n plus 1 in our formula accordingly. If we use n plus 1 in our formula, this is the equation we must prove. If we look at the left-hand side, then according to the assumption in step 2, every term before the n plus 1 squared term comes together and sums to 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So that means we're just adding 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 to n plus 1 whole squared, which I can expand to n squared plus 2n plus 1. So that's the left-hand side dealt with. Let's look at this right-hand side. What I'm going to do is distribute this first n plus 1 over to end up with two different terms. The next thing I'll do is take the second bracket in the first term and distribute out the n plus 1 and 1 separately. And at the same time, I'm also going to rewrite this 2 times n plus 1 plus 1 term as 2n plus 3. The last thing I'll do is write this first 2n plus 3 as 2n plus 1 plus 2 and distribute out the 2n plus 1 and the 2 separately. When I do that, here's what I'll get. Let's now expand these last three terms. If we now combine these last three terms, the 2n squared here combines with the 2n squared here and the 2n squared here to give 6n squared which, when divided by 6, just gives you n squared. This gets added to 7n plus 3n plus 2n, which is just 12n. Divide that by 6, you get 2n. This then gets added to 6 over 6, which is just 1. So in the end, we have 1 over 6 times n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 plus n squared plus 2n plus 1, which is exactly equal to the left-hand side from earlier. And since the n plus 1 case is true, we have therefore proven by mathematical induction that the sum of the first n squares is given by this formula. Anyway, that should do it for this video. Hopefully it gave, hopefully it gave you an idea of math induction and the natural numbers, which will serve us well as we progress further in analysis. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.